Today's topic will be sales tax in QuickBooks Point of Sale and how it interacts with QuickBooks Desktop Financial. I hope you find this useful. First of all, we will talk about how to set up sales tax in Point of Sale. Then we will show you how those sales tax items interact in QuickBooks Financial Desktop. And lastly, we will talk about reporting so that you can make sure that you pay your sales tax correctly. To set up sales tax in point of sale, we go to File, Preferences, Company. From there, we click on Sales Tax. Now during the setup interview, you will set up a basic sales tax protocol, but here's where you can set up more complex. You can see here that we have the local sales tax. That is what's normally created when you go through the setup interview. We have tax set up to collect 10% paid to CDTFA, which is the entity in California, and then non is no tax. Notice that we've also set up a resale sales tax location, as well as an out of state and an online sales tax. The reason we do that is so that we can actually categorize the sale by the type of customer. So think about tax locations as being the type of customer you're selling to and think about tax codes as being what you're selling. So in this case, an out-of-state, we collect no sales tax on our taxable items. In our online sales tax, we actually collect two different taxes that are paid to, in this case, the same entity, but normally what we would do is we would set up different entities. For example, in Colorado, their sales tax calculations are very complex, meaning that you collect and pay sales tax to the various entities. For example, City of Inglewood, City of Denver, as opposed to California where I'm recording this, that we pay all of our sales tax to the California Department of Taxation and Fee Administration, and then they distribute this various sales tax amounts to the counties and the local entities. It's a very simple process in California, not so much in other states. So you can see that basically if we go through and click on edit tax code, this will give us the ability to set up the code. We can call it whatever we want. We can change on the receipt if we want it to do something other than the T, which is default. Next, you get the option of single rate tax, price dependent single rate tax, or multi. So in most cases, single rate tax will be what you're using, but in some states, for example, New York City, if you buy clothing that is over a certain amount, then you have to charge sales tax on it. So you would use this option. And then as I showed you for the online sales tax, multi-rate tax, tax would be where you would create various components. So now that we've set that up, default tax location is local sales tax, and the default code when creating a department is tax. Now that you've seen how to set up sales tax and point of sale, let's look at the interaction between point of sale and QuickBooks Desktop Financial. I'm going to pull up my Desktop Financial here, and you can see that I have a sales receipt. By default, Point of Sale creates a sales receipt for each sale that is transferred over. We actually do recommend that you set up summary transfer. That's a topic for another day. But for our example here, we've left it as a default, meaning that it will create a single sales receipt for each sales receipt and Point of Sale. Notice that I have the item that I sold. I have a subtotal. This is my 10% tax for POS Tax Agency, collecting the $5, and then this is a cash sale. So notice that I have a tax line up in the body of my sales receipt. I also have POS Sales Tax in this tax field. The reason for that is that QuickBooks Desktop Financial requires something in this field Therefore, POS sets up the POS sales tax with a 0% percent 
as a placeholder to be able to put in there and then it embeds the actual sales tax in the body of the receipt. The reason for that is that if I'm in a multi-location, multi-tax entity and I'm doing summary receipts, I would have multiple tax lines in my sales receipt, but I still need something here. The reason for this will become an apparent when we talk about reporting and can lead to a lot of confusion in the QuickBooks Financial reports. So those of you that have worked with QuickBooks Desktop Financial, you'll be familiar with the Sales Tax Liability Report. Clicking on Reports, Vendors and Payables, Sales Tax Liability. So this report should look pretty standard to you. However, when we're using Point of Sale, there are several differences that I need you to take note of. Notice that we have the 10% tax, the $50 that I showed you in the previous screen. We collect the $5. We also have a 7.0, which is no sales amount. But notice down below here, POS sales tax. That is that item that is in the sales tax code field. It will report the same amount, but there will be no sales tax collected. Therefore, that's the zero here. And then look at this, multiple taxes from different vendors. I have so many people that ask me about this, and they don't really understand it. And this is a very simple example, but if you can imagine if you're dealing with tens of thousands of dollars of sales tax, this can be very confusing to you. So let's talk about why this happens. Again, I have the standard sales tax of 10%. I have the placeholder POS sales tax. So in fact, I do have multiple taxes from different vendors. And so what happens is it backs out that tax. So basically, if I ignore this bottom part, I get my sales of $50, I get my $5, and I'm all good. However, where we get into trouble is that sometimes these two will not offset each other and therefore it can create problems in the reporting. The reason why it won't directly offset deals with sometimes deposits taken and whatnot, but for this reason we highly recommend that you do not use this report when you're calculating sales tax and that you use the report that's in point of sale which we'll show you shortly. The only reason why we would use this report is in the situation where we have someone who is taking sales inside of QuickBooks as well as sales inside a point of sale. This is a rare situation, but it does happen. For example, I have a gym equipment company that is using point of sale in their store, and then they use QuickBooks to charge their service accounts. Therefore, we in fact do need to run the report out of QuickBooks Financial. So knowing that we don't want to use this report inside of QuickBooks Financial, how will we get our sales tax? We would go to QuickBooks Point of Sale. We would click on Reports. Click under Sales. If we go down below, you'll see under Taxes, we have Tax Category Summary. And it'll pull that report. Notice that I don't have the issue of having a plus and a minus. I have my straight up my sales and my tax and I'm good to go. If I had multiple locations with different sales taxes, basically it would list each of those there. So this report is very simple, very user friendly, and will make it much, much easier. The sales tax liability will always be correct, meaning that the amount of tax that is collected is transmitted over to QuickBooks Financial. So when I go into pay sales tax through the pay sales tax functionality in QuickBooks Desktop Financial, the amount will be correct and use the report here to be able to fill out whatever tax agency reports that I am required to fill out in order to remit my sales tax. That's it. It is just that easy to be able to determine the amount of sales tax that you need to pay and to report on it properly. 
I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any support requirements or need quotations on any hardware or software or any QuickBooks services, please use the contact information to get a hold of us to get a quote.